Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Jeff, and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic, and we're diving into 2022 Standard with Pyre of Heroes deck with uh, Clerics. So we got some pretty sweet new Clerics with Dawnbringer Cleric here, as well as just Cleric Class in general to be a fun one. Uh, and we have a pretty fun little combo here that we can go for. So Pyre of Heroes lets us sacrifice for two mana, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with a sacrifice creature and has mana value equal to one plus that creature's mana value. Put that onto the battlefield then shuffle and activate only as a sorcery so we have a bunch of two drop clerics with no priest oblivion professor symbology and umbria cleric so we have we should be able to find those guys we have plenty of ways to gain life as well by the way so that we can actually make this work but righteous valkyrie is the cleric that you're trying to find righteous valkyrie is awesome we want to be able to find that with pyre of heroes but we also don't really want to sacrifice it to find other things all of the time but what we're trying to do is find like a priest of of ancient lore as well maybe by sacrificing another one of these guys to be able to use pyre of heroes again to then get us up to Aura. Aura, Skyclave Hierophant, does some pretty cool things where if we do sacrifice it, then we get to go find a Righteous Valkyrie from the graveyard, which so maybe we did ri sacrifice Righteous Valkyrie to find Aura, but then we can find Righteous Valkyrie from the graveyard, put it onto the battlefield, then find Angel of Destiny for five mana, and at the same time, so we can choose which one we'll, we'll resolve first, I believe. Uh, so we can have Righteous Valkyrie hit the battlefield, find Angel of Destiny, gain six life, which should be able to put us over the top to make sure that we have enough life to then have the big buff. And then Angel of Destiny and Righteous Valkyrie should just win the game. That's that's the basic idea of this. Everything else is a bunch of interaction. Blood Chief's Thirst, uh, Vanishing Verse is a four of because it gets rid of a lot of things in the format right now. Agony's Awakening to bring stuff back from the graveyard because we're throwing lots of things in the graveyard anyway. So we can throw Righteous Valkyrie in the graveyard just fine as long as we get up to six mana boom bam it's back uh doom scar as well for board wives and mary's call so we have the ability to throw things in the graveyard just fine righteous valkyrie is something we want to keep on the board as much as possible but even if we do get to the graveyard it's fine we have no priest of blame to bring it back whatever else and uh or uh pyre of heroes whatever so that's the deck guys let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay see how this one actually does for us and wish me luck here we go hey quick reminder before we dive into the gameplay to hit the subscribe button it helps support the channel a ton and i definitely appreciate it all right let's dive into the gameplay here we go up against pappy yanez three lands nothing really to play aura is not bad but we need early game stuff to actually work with this so let's mulligan all right better 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 keep this drop um baleful mastery i should be able to get some other removal with with this anyway yeah sure agony's awakening tapped pass the turn professor symbology into pyre aura nice so actually we want lands now so i think we go for environmental sciences here um yeah oh i need to change up the sideboard the sideboard was definitely built uh for for best of three um oops pyre of heroes is pretty nice to play here too we can play it out and sacrifice stuff on the next turn so let's go ahead and attack in first dongry cleric is interesting i think we hold on to that though so environmental sciences Grab Swamp, play out Swamp, pass the turn. We can also play out Aura and then activate Pyre of Heroes after. Only activate as a sorcery. It's another Aura. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Uh, I guess we play Aura first, right? Because then when you sacrifice Pyre, I guess it won't actually bring anything back from the graveyard. It's fine. Sable Stroke, cool. Rude. Removal, cool. Pass the turn. Balazeth Prismari. Mary's Call, tapped. Do I just kill this or do I start playing other stuff? Let's let's go ahead and kill it. They might have another one. But get rid of big threats when we can. Gold span. Angel of Destiny is a pretty great blocker against this. Um, land would be good so we can play Aura and Pyre.
Vanishing Verse. Sweet. Ah, not enough mana to actually play very much, though. Um, let's play out our creatures first. Gain life. Only destroys enchantments. I don't think that'll be really useful here. Pick it up Pyre, then, or... I think we get out the creature and we can play Pyre and then activate it quickly. So just let's gain some life here. Vanishing Verse. To get a treasure, do you have a counter spell? Hopefully not. It's not coming. Cool. Yeah. Goldstone Dragon is so annoying. <laughs> that two mana that it gets anytime you target it is so good. Yeah, there's a Prismari. Oh. Ooh. Bless you guys. Wow. Rude. <laughs> All right. Five mana. How bad does it get? Bolts themselves. Tries to find other things to play. Already played the land, just barely. Planes. All right, so I can find Righteous Valkyrie with Pyre right now, or the guy that draws us a card. Um. Yeah, let's let's play out Pyre first. Pyre. It win life draw card. Decent play. Righteous Valkyrie can't actually block anything at the moment. Gain that's a ton of life later. Um, aura can then be sacrificed to find other things though. Drawing a card could be really good. If we can find another two drop here, it's definitely worthwhile. Or removal or whatever. Okay. Like Righteous Valkyrie is good, but it's it's not the perfect card just yet. Down to 10. Hmm. Yeah, game. All right. Bummer. So what we what we could have done there is with the Priest of Ancient Lore, so we could have uh, sacrificed it to go find an aura, play out an aura, get rid of the other aura, uh, and bring back Priest of Ancient Lore, gain at least a little bit more life that way, got an extra card draw, try to find something else along the way. Uh, we would have had eight mana to be able to... Oh, sorry. Three mana to try to find uh, Angel along the way as well, but oh well. All right, up against Rich and Sweet Hand here. I like it. Two lands, but Professor Symbology to find stuff on the draw as well. Should be fine. And something to kill on turn one. I like it. Definitely worth getting rid of Ramp if they're an Elves deck. For sure. All right, Professor of Symbology. It looks like we are going to have to find the Environmental Sciences, unfortunately. Hopefully we can find a land and draw with Priest. Um, sciences. Pass the turn. Professor of Symbology is a sweet card. Having it work with Synergies and Clerics, even better. All right, what colors do we need the most of? I think it's black. I can't remember. Either way, now we're playing Righteous Valkyrie. Let's get some big boys out there. No attacks, pass the turn. Land would be great for the aura. Another old Ghost Troll. That's those are some big boys. Limbs are scurry. Blizzard Brawl. Crap. Well, aura will help with that a little bit at least. Indestructible. No blocks. Right. Brizzard Brawl is not just good, it's flipping amazing. I keep forgetting about that. Um, well, we need to hit land, so environmental sciences, grab planes, gain some life. Um man, being able to destroy enchantment could get rid of the other side of this. Yeah, let's go symbology here. Let's go reduce the memory. Yeah, Necrotic Fumes is better. No attacks. Pass the turn. We can double block something. Eska's Chariot. Hmm. 
Well, definitely do block here. We need to keep ourselves at least a little bit more alive. They might get ramp and be able to play something else here as well. There, the Hydra gets a little bit better. Snakeskin Vel. Wow, what a hand. Whew. Man, is, was there anything wrong with this hand? I'm not so sure about that. Um, <laughs> crap. I wish this could get artifacts as well. Not so. Well, um, we do play Aura. For sure. If we had a land, we could maybe play Dongbringer Cleric, gain some life, exile something. Um, but now they have Lair of the Hydra and Eskis Chariot. They should definitely buff up the Lair of the Hydra. I think that's actually game if they do. But they might also forget. Please forget. We have 13 life with Aura. We can kill the Lair of the Hydra. All right, so... I mean, we kill the only thing that we can kill, right? We gain enough life. I think we go to one after all this. Gain three, go to zero. Okay, I can remember. Oh, well, that's fine. We're done. All right, up against Atma. We have Doomscar to foretell and then potentially play on turn three. We only have the two planes and a lot of things require black mana, but I think that we do keep this. We hope for the black mana. We hope for a third land in general, uh, but with Doomscar available, that means we should be able to handle most things. Um, we're looking down to six. The only deck that we're worried about is Demir Snow Control. How about that? That's what we're probably playing against. Pass the turn. I haven't seen a snarl yet. Snarl yet. I'm not sure if we're actually playing those. Exile it so it doesn't get the treasure. Might be worthwhile. We're gonna go professor though. Um, target non-land permanent is gonna be pretty nice to have in this matchup. I, I'm assuming they have planeswalkers. Is all I'm looking at here. This is something we can actually play earlier on, most likely, though. Yeah, sure. We'll keep that. Okay, plays the Deadly Dispute right away. Kills Professor Symbology or gets the treasure? Okay, treasure. Yeah, lots of ramp. Hits the land. Use it right away. Okay. All right, so it, they already have an answer for Righteous Valkyrie, which is annoying. Um, this Exiles, yeah. Gone for good. That's not fun. Um, already played out of the land. Um... Bletchy's Thirst into... Do I actually want to play out Righteous Valkyrie just to get rid of this? We get a 3-2 Spirit still out of it. Let's... Um... Let's go ahead and kill this. And either Foretail Doomscar or let's go Environmental Sciences. Just get it to hand. Find another Black Source. Pass the turn. Merchant. Play Aura. I, I want to get make them get rid of the reduced to memory as soon as possible. Pass the turn. So, snow treasure stuff? Could still, de still definitely be playing uh, Professor Onyx or Lolth. 
with Plum the Forbidden, they actually work pretty well together. And they already want to be able to sacrifice uh, Shambling Gas, so Plum the Forbidden works pretty well. Kaya. That's another way to exile stuff. All right, so Vanishing Verse. The, the Blood in the Snow is going to be annoying. But attack there. Um, let's exile card from Graveyard, actually. Get rid of Kaya. That way the Blood in the Snow doesn't get it back. Westgate Regent. I have to discard a card. That's kind of okay with us. I could also just go for the Doom Scar. On the next turn. All right, uh, let's go ahead and exile this dude. Resolve, get rid of Priest of Ancient Lore. Fertel a Doom Scar, swing in for three. Down to 15, pass the turn. Professor. Yeah, we're just going to have to play through these. I don't really know a better way. Mascot Exhibition. Uh, six mana right now. Okay, so we hold off on the Doom Scar for a little bit. Unfortunately, this exiles. That means we can't bring him back with Null Priest very easily. We, we are going to go ahead and play this out just to... I don't know why. Swing in. Face the Haven, right. Forgot about that. Okay, he goes for the mascot exhibition. Agadim's Awakening is pretty interesting. Uh, Doom Scarring this can actually be better for us. I do want to find another black source for the Agonim's Awakening. We do have Cave of the Frost Dragon. I don't know what to do here. So the my thoughts are these. Uh, so we do have Cave of the Frost Dragon, Dragon, which is nice. It's not quite as fast as Faceless Haven, unfortunately, but it can trade off. Um, reduce the memory is really annoying. Doom Scar means that we get to keep Righteous Factory in the graveyard. If we find another Black Star, if Agony's Awakening brings us back at least a few things, um, which is nice. Um... We can also play out the Black Source here with no Priest and bring it back from the graveyard as well. So I, I think that the Doom Scar here is the best play no matter what. If we find a Black Source on the next turn, great. Otherwise, we bolt this in and play no Priest to bring back Righteous Factory to then have it die to reduce the memory. But then we at least get a 3-2 that can block face the Haven. I, I, I think that's the best plan. Uh, a black source off the top would definitely be better. There we go. All right, so Agonim's Awakening. So Righteous Factory and Professor. Gain more life, get the buff potentially. We'll die anyway. Yeah, Professor is the better one. All 
All right. Our own reduced memory doesn't hit much. Um, mascot exhibition, if we find the land, is pretty sweet. Yeah, let's, let's go for that. Let's have a decent card to play soon. All right, basically forcing them to use the reduced to memory. Professor Symbology. Now they have more. Yay! Another mascot. Okay. Yeah, reduce the memory. Give us a 3 2. Land. Cleric class. Not the worst. Definitely not bad. Um. I think I actually want to level this up before I do much else. So. Before I play up the Null Priest of Oblivion. You can also bring set back from the graveyard with this, which is nice. Um, do I offer the trade here? What are we bringing back? Priest. Ancient Lord's decent. Let's just say no attacks. Pass the turn. So being too greedy there with playing Little Priest of Oblivion was, would be, be interesting. Um, we have the ability to gain some life with the Priest of uh, Ancient Lore. I can also just use this to bring it back as well. Um, and maybe wait until we have bigger things in the graveyard, like an Angel of Destiny or something. Um, I mean, having stuff in the graveyard is decent for us, so sure. Doomscar. That's not bad. Mm, that means we're still dealing with Faceless Haven, but I think it's worthwhile. Yeah, Doomscar. Okay, we got rid of two mascot exhibitions. That should be all of them in their deck. They should have... Uh, maybe it was only one reduced to memory. They should have more necrotic fumes because they're playing the Shambling Ghast. And there's just so much value in this whole system of... Uh, yeah, Plum the Forbidden, I feel like, works really well with this. Blood in the Snow, there's just, there's just so many good cards. Faceless Haven. I, I do think that Orzhov Snow stuff shenanigans is just really good. Kaya. Non-land permanent. Okay. Righteous Factory. This exile is a non-land permanent. We can hit this pretty hard. And that somewhat helps. I guess. I guess we do that. Yeah, Kai is a really annoying thing for us to deal with right now. Hit for four. Down to 11. Life total getting lower. Not great. We really need to hit a land. All right, Double Righteous Valkyrie is pretty sweet stuff. That means we can actually start doing... That means that one of them should survive till the next turn. Hopefully. I could also just keep hitting Kaya. But let's go for this. Righteous Valkyrie... They could also just have removal in hand. If they have Vanishing Verse or whatever else, they have a treasure to play it here with. Uh, then they just get rid of both of our Righteous Valkyries. Both are exiled. And then we have nothing to do. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right. Um, counter onto one of them. Whatever one we put it on, that's the one that dies. But at least you can block Faces Haven, so it forces them to remove that one. And then hopefully No Priest of Oblivion can bring back 
one of them or priest of ancient lore have a bunch of different life gain triggers life is good you do have removal they don't have removal okay good 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 but they probably found it Yeah, I think getting Kai off the board is top priority. We gain enough life that we can take the damage from Faceless Haven and kind of play this out again. Blood in the Snow. Crap. That means they don't have to... Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. They didn't tick up on Kaya onto the school port. Did they already do that before? Oh, yeah. There we go. Elite Spellbinder. Bummer. Little priest going away. They have enough blockers in the air to actually kill the cave of the frost, the frost giant. Or sorry, frost dragon. It's rid of that. Brutal. Well, at least we got a mascot exhibition online, finally. That's something. That isn't the absolute worst. And with Cave now, we have a couple of attackers going towards Kaya next turn. Decent. Another Blood in the Snow would be brutal, though. Yep, counter on to Spellbinder. Another Kaya. I will stand by as innocent people are slaughtered. Man, this is getting just annoying. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Taxing with everything. Yeah, the Faceless Haven is still block here with. Um, I think they forgot about the cave. So we can kill Kaya. That's all that matters. Attack with that guy. In. Don't attack the 3-2. Faceless Haven just comes back. They're willing to make the trade. We just need to protect our life total from it. And so... Yeah, attack like that. Vigilance would be sweet if only we were as good as Faceless Haven. And Faceless Haven is just so good. <laughs> Having a flyer is pretty sweet. Costs one more, though. three, Two more, sorry. And having this step down actually ends up being three more, so... Yeah. More card draw. Good for you. Maybe it's only Kaya. Maybe they aren't playing um, any of the other stuff. Loth and whatever else. Turn target planes locker with Mana Value X. That's a good way to get back at Kaya. It's rid of the blocker? Why not get rid of the 4-4? Four -four? And they get in for one more point of damage here. It does stop Faceless Haven a little bit, I suppose. But it's not like an amazing card there. Belfo Mastery is sweet. I can just kill Kaya again. They attacked him with the Flyers again. This exiles, which means we don't run into that same shenanigans again. Although they still have another one in there, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the only benefit is we get to play out a pyre. I 
and maybe dodge removal. Yeah, in case they had a vanishing verse or something there, they can still kill the cave with that. Let's go ahead and just do this. Taking four damage a turn. Uh, if they pull up face to save and we have to block that, that is exactly lethal on board. No attacks. I needed to kill a creature. Man, got got again. We've been playing against some of the best decks there is. So yeah, we can block here, but they have they have enough for lethal despite that. And so, oh, well, all right. Two lands on the draw. Oh, it's a really good hand. But we really have to hit that land to make it decent. Having double aura is actually sweet. I, I'm going to go ahead and try this one. We we need luck. We're just going to say that luck is on our side, finally. It's got to happen eventually, right? There it is. There it is. See? Luck always comes eventually. Hello. All right, pass the turn. Hold up Vanishing Verse for the Righteous Valkyrie in case it comes. Definitely care more about that. Then a 19. A flashy dude. Do I want to get rid of the Youthful Valkyrie? Youthful Valkyrie is still an important thing to get rid of. They probably are holding up removal as well. Let's go ahead and do it. We'll find more removal. See, we'll find more removal. Life is great. Throw this out on... We, we technically want more black mana in general. Play out Righteous Valkyrie. I'm assuming they have removal. If it's destruction removal, we're fine with it. If it's Vanishing Verse, we'll cry a little bit, get rid of it, move on to Aura and other stuff. Uh, okay. I like when other people are having fun with this stuff. All right. Four mana. Ura. And more vanishing versus soul shatter. Nothing to get back. Right. I miscalculated there a little bit. Righteous Valkyrie. Land. Come on with the land. Um... Priest to try to find the land here. No, no land. Wow. Okay, then. Dude, everything exiles. This deck is no longer good. Everything in the world exiles. <laughs> it's it's kind of terrifying. Um, I guess double vanishing verse isn't the worst. Uh, Doomscar is actually... I want to keep this on the board for Doomscar. So, foretell a Doomscar... And then hold up Vanishing Verse till next turn. Pass the turn. Foretells their own Doomscar. Get rid of Vicious Valkyrie now. Keep our life total a little bit higher. Alright. Uh, third Black Source for Agonim's Awakenings. Angel Destiny is not the worst. I can play out Priest and hold up Vanishing Verse. That also, if it dies, we then have something for Aura to actually work with. They might have Soul Shatter, Doom Scar, or whatever else here. So let's just play this for now. Land, pass the turn. Trading off with Apparition is fine with us. All right. I could have exiled in response. It wouldn't have left the battlefield, but I'm assuming that they'll attack in with this now. And then we get to kill this. 
block that, get a 2-2 two, two out of it. Life is good. Oh, wait, wait, this will be a 3-3. Three, three. Right. Get two 3-3s. Three, Alright. They're more empty-handed than us now. That is a good sign, right? Nothing in the graveyard. We can play Aura and Dawnbringer, get rid of their nothing. They have nothing. Yeah, let's do that. Aura and Dawnbringer. 15 more life is what we're needing than a starting life total. Another Soul Shatter is bad. Last card in hand. Starnheim Unleashed. Okay. Um, We do want to board wipe before other stuff. All right, attack in. I should have just attacked in with the cleric there. Oh well, yeah, because now now we board wipe. We at least get a three three out of it. I I could have kept the aura alive to then die to get a the Dawnbringer back now, but whatever. Pass turn. All right, they're top decking. We have Angel of Destiny, Retribution, permanent. I believe we care about killing more this or this power less than the creature. We could Oh, this is yeah, it's multicolored anyway, so doesn't matter. Angel of Destiny. Attack in both gain life up to 25. Righteous Valkyrie, Kewl. At gaining lots of life here, this should be enough for lethal. Yep. Not too shabby. All right, we got the win, finally, with this deck. I feel like we were playing good games with all of them, but that... <laughs> We finally got the win. All right, so Pyre of Clerics, Clerics Pyre, uh, decent card, decent deck. Pyre didn't seem to be as useful for me as I was hoping. Um, and part of the issue was is that it was really hard to like have two drops on the battlefield. And then I, everyone was just playing Exile Removal, which is just destroys our deck. You know, like it's, if, if Righteous Valkyrie gets exiled, that's the issue is we were planning on Righteous Valkyrie dying and then we can bring back with aura but if they're exiling it with everything then it doesn't matter if we have pyre because then it's not really good in the graveyard and we can sacrifice that i guess the throne in the graveyard to then use it whatever but then they just exile afterwards anyway so playing the more grindy game was was decent but i feel like we needed to shift up maybe a couple things in the deck like maybe pyre isn't actually all that great but between aura no priest of oblivion and whatever we already have enough stuff to bring back from the graveyard that it's fine then maybe we just needed to have more pieces of removal more interaction or a kaya in the deck as well uh, i think that going into snowlands and having faceless haven would be better as well uh maybe even having doom uh the not doom scar but the blood in the snow for for land destruction to make sure we can bring back something from the graveyard is pretty nice angel of destiny was the win con that we weren't really getting to as much either i probably should have played it sometimes earlier than I, than I had just to gain more life against some decks uh but it just it everything died so fast uh, in three of those matchups so i i do think this deck is powerful i think that it actually has a chance to play really well and i think it is a higher win win percentage than we showed here um but we just played up against bad matchups had bad luck with against them they had lots of good interaction for the matchup and i i think that they were just they were just hard matchups so where you could win some of the time anyway so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did leave a like and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much and bye bye